Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your game plan for Retirement Northwestern Ohio, your resource for a common sense approach to planning, helping to uncomplicate and to clarify the financial, the investment, the retirement planning world. He is your resource, Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. Chris, we always appreciate your time. Hey, Peter, it's good to be with everybody. Hope you're having a good weekend out there. Well, we appreciate the time that you spend with us, the guidance, the insight, uh, the perspective that you put on the financial world, which Chris can be pretty complicated. And I'm sure you're talking to a lot of clients and a lot of people who are not yet clients that have some concerns about what they're seeing and what's going on in the world and how it affects our money. Yeah, certainly, Peter. I think, uh, you know, uh, let's, uh, you know, be honest, the fallout of the Afghanistan uh, occupation or whatever you want to call it is certainly, uh, you know, uh, not been good for American psyche, I guess, all in all, and that leads to confidence. So, uh, you know, uh, we got a pretty big political divide out there. So uh, I think a lot of people are uh, distressed about what's going on. You know, um, you know, we can make that argument trying to steer clear of the politics here, but you can't, uh, can't ignore the fact that you know, it, it isn't a hit to the psyche all in all. And I can show you the emails and things like that. We're not getting a lot of praiseful emails that people think we're going down the right course, I guess. Yeah, it does seem like in, in many ways, Chris, things are just not what they used to be, I guess. But I think that every generation, every decade sort of feels like, yeah, things are just going down the drain. Uh, there's some event that we feel like, oh, this could be the end of it all. And then tomorrow still comes. So we have to plan as though tomorrow will be here and plan for a long term time horizon and outlook so that when we get there, when tomorrow does come, we are ready and we are prepared. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, we've uh, uh, often made some jokes here that, you know, we need to put up some billboards that say to the millennial generation, you're not oppressed, you're just bored. <laughs> mm. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got questions about your money, about your finances, Chris McIntyre is your resource and he is here to help and assist, provide direction and guidance. 800-868-1194 is the number to call. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. You can also go online, McIntyreRetirementServices.com, McIntyre Retirement Services. Lots of great additional resources available online there as well. Chris, on today's program, discussing two of the most widely debated financial tools that are out there and available, life insurance and annuities. And we'll discuss the different types, the reasons to consider them or not to to consider them the pros and cons, but they are the source of a lot of debate, it seems, in the financial world. Yeah, it certainly does. And, uh, you know, there's many different types. So it's hard to say that, uh, you know, one piece of advice applies to every life insurance policy that's available or every annuity that's available. It's kind of like saying you should never own any bonds. Well, there's government bonds, corporate bonds, high yield bonds. What do you mean? You just can't make a blatant statement and say, I don't like life insurance. I don't like annuities. Uh, you know, what types and that type of thing. And uh, I'm sure we'll get into that in the show here today, buddy. Well, at, at its core, Chris, insurance is a form of financial protection. Uh, auto insurance, home insurance, medical liability, uh, long-term care, disability, retirement income. A lot of people don't really realize that you can actually insure your retirement income. They, they are all purchases that do have a cost, but provide us with a much higher level of that financial protection. And that really specifically is what the different types of insurance offer us and are all about. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, uh, you know, if we want to say, you know, uh, only life insurance companies offer life insurance, obviously, and annuities. So, you know, it's kind of a way to hedge life and death, if you will. You get life insurance in case you die too early uh, in, the, in a general uh, statement. And you get an annuity in case you live too long so that you always have your income. And, you know, I think the 
the basic example of an annuity is Social Security. We put money into this and then we get a paycheck for the rest of our life. That's kind of the, the basic format or the typical pension that somebody may have from a corporation or a government entity. Teachers are very common to have pensions as well. They get some form of an annuity payment for as long as they are alive. And if they die, their spouse may continue to get all or a portion of what they were getting while they were working. And, and Chris, the reason why insurance companies are considered so financially stable and, and why they can offer this is because they, they have both. They offer on one hand life insurance, they offer on the other hand the annuity. They are basically the opposite sides of life expectancy and, and actuarial tables. With life insurance, I'm essentially making a bet with a company that I may die before you think I'm going to die. So I'm going to pay small payments my entire life. And when I win that bet and pass away early, somebody gets a big lump sum. With an annuity, I say, you know, I may live longer than you think I'm going to live than actuarial tables would suggest. So I deposit a lump sum and then they pay me for as long as I'm alive, regardless of how long that may be. And annuities and, and, and life insurance companies, they are able to balance the two sides of those actuarial tables because of the law of large numbers. For any one individual, it may be difficult to do, but for a pool of uh, thousands of people, they can pretty well predict when and what side of that actuarial table uh, they are going to be on. Yeah, I often draw, draw the analogy, Peter, in my office is the law of large numbers. So they can take 100,000 people and they can tell you which one of them are going to die. They just don't know the names of those individuals, but they know how many will at what ages in, in, in a normal set of circumstances. And you get something like COVID, okay, where you've got a lot of unpredicted deaths. And again, that's why, you know, the conservative nature of insurance, you know, uh, will there be price adjustments because of that from actuarial tables that's yet to be determined by and large, most of the COVID deaths that were with people that had comorbidities and, you know, in, in, in things along those lines. So to back up onto the annuity side there, Peter, we'll transition into that piece is, you know, I think the biggest misunderstanding on the annuity side is that so many people think I'm going to turn money over to insurance company. I'm going to, and if I die, they get to keep it. And, you know, Social Security kind of works that way. If you don't live, you know, that benefit stops. You might have a benefit that goes to a spouse or something like that, of course. But if you and your spouse are both killed in a car accident, you don't get anything out of Social Security then, uh, you know, for your beneficiaries, let's say. Um, and then, you know, in our world where we're at right now, you know, we do a lot of pre-retirement planning. So we use deferred annuities. So uh, tax is deferred until you take money out of that. You can fund an annuity out of your 401k. Um, you can fund an annuity from your pension lump sum. And then you can determine when you turn that income on. You may want to control the investment side of it. You may take your pension lump sum benefit and split it into two different annuities, for example. Turn one on now turn one on later. A lot of different flexibilities out there. But by and large, we do that for our clients that say, look, I want lifetime income. I want the ability to have my income increase and, you know, with the rising threats of inflation. But if something happens, I want to make sure that money pays to my beneficiary. So that's the more modern type annuities that are out there. Now, Chris, you are an advisor that helps your clients manage their investments and their retirement accounts. You help them to invest and understand those investments and then manage those investments uh, both in the market and out and really look at a holistic picture of the plan, but certainly part of that holistic planning process. You, you help them to review, to evaluate, to address life insurance needs or where there's a decision with a pension, like you just mentioned, that's another one that behaves oftentimes like social security, that if we pass away early, the rest of that pension money basically goes back to the company to pay other employees that might outlive life expectancies. And a lot of people don't want their money just to evaporate or take the risk that it could. And so making those decisions, working through and crunching the numbers, does it make sense to take the company pension payout? Or does it make sense to take that money privately, take ownership of it, and then set up our own 
guaranteed streams of income. Those are things that you work through along with and coordinate and complement the investment programs that you help your clients put together. Absolutely. You know, when somebody comes into the office and their biggest concern is, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that we won't have enough for retirement, we won't have enough income, or running out of money is the term. Running out of money and running out of income are two different phrases there, right? You could you could have an investment portfolio worth a million dollars, and if you spend a million dollars, you're done, you know. Um, whereas if you had an annuity, and you took money out of that annuity and the balance went to zero, for example, you lived a long time, you still get an income out of it. So again, running out of money and running out of income are two different things. This is so important right now for this baby boom generation, Peter, that you know even Congress is creating legislation to allow people to fund their own annuities within their 401k platforms because uh, pensions have gone by the wayside. That's how important lifetime income is not just an investment result, because, you know, we do full scale wealth management planning, like you said, on the fiduciary standard, you know, so we believe in, in our hearts that, hey, we've got to have an income plan in here, you know, or, or several income plans. So maybe we hedge an annuity just in case the investment piece goes south and we need to turn an annuity on for income to allow investment pieces to recover. Because, if you're getting ready to retire out there right now, for most of you, you're, if you haven't done any sort of retirement planning whatsoever, your biggest threat is I'm going to retire. And then the stock market takes two or three years of, you know, very mediocre or even negative returns like a 2000, a 2001, a 2002. You don't want to have something like that come right out of the gate in retirement. You want to have a, another element where, okay, if that does happen, I've protected myself. I've hedged my bet with an insurance product. Again, we are talking with Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. If you would like help or guidance, if you would like the assistance of a qualified experienced professional in constructing the plan or reviewing your current plan, double checking it and making sure that it is complete for achieving your future goals, pick up the phone and give a call. Chris will help you put together that game plan for retirement or help you review your current plan. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Uh, Chris, you, you mentioned the concern of running out of money or running out of income. Annuities do serve that role. They address that concern specifically. They're biggest strength perhaps is that annuities can provide a protected stream of lifetime income. Now there are a few other benefits and there are some things that we need to know when we are setting up that income, but at their core, that is their number one job, which is why the, the government is pushing forward initiatives to include them in 401ks and suggesting that all Americans really should have some source of lifetime income to supplement social security. No question about it. It's uh, it's paramount. And we've been doing this radio show forever, Peter, and we've always advocated covering those basic expenses, your living expenses, you know, with that guarantee type of income between Social Security pensions, uh, you know, and what other resources that you have, the add an annuity to make that happen. Now, you know, to get more in the, the specific types of deferred annuities, you know, the most common types are a variable annuity, which we are typically not uh, in favor of doing uh, because you have some stock market risk that comes with them. You have some higher fees that come with the variable annuity. So it's just something that we don't feel is in a retiree's best interest. We like to utilize more of the fixed annuity where you make a guaranteed interest rate or even a fixed index annuity where you have some earnings linked to the performance of a stock market index, but it comes with downside protection. So zero, you know, when the market's down 20%, for example, your annuity, your index annuity, fixed index annuity would lose zero. So we like that concept. We use it as a safe money strategy, if you will. Um, you know, you can talk to 10 different people and get 10 different, uh, uh, opinions, you know, our opinion comes from being independent. So we don't have corporate guidance down there saying, well, this is the way we've always done it. So this is what we want you to push to the clients. We don't have that bias. So, you know, we, we risk is important. Fees are important. So we want to try to, uh, uh, you know, minimize all of those aspects for a retiree's uh, foundation money, if you will. 
Chris, there was a recent article put out by Market Watch. It featured uh, Robert Ibbotson, um, who is a very well-known economist. And he actually made the case that along with the lifetime income value and strength, deferred and fixed deferred and fixed indexed annuities specifically can have some additional benefits and roles within a portfolio. He actually argued that due to the low interest rate and yield, due to the potential risk of principal and the fees that are often associated with bonds in a portfolio, that annuities now could or could be considered to replace those bonds and the net result would be to lower the risk to the overall portfolio, lower the fees in the overall portfolio, and oftentimes increase the yield or the income that that portfolio can generate. Sure. And have a contractual guarantee for lifetime income, you know, and, uh, you know, many of the annuity companies, you know, have some uh, incentives, you know, they may give you an upfront bonus for a deposit into the account. They may give you the ability to increase your income by the growth of the annuity every year without risk to your principal. I mean, those are some wonderful aspects. Um, you know, why are, uh, you know, why do they get such a bad rap in the press out there? And, you know, some of the talking heads, you know, aren't a big fan of them for whatever they talk about high commissions. It's like, you know, well, what's over the course of 10 years, what costs you more of an annuity with a 5% commission or uh, a managed account that charges you a 1% fee over 10 years? That's 10%, you know? So, I mean, you got to break down the math. Some of the propaganda that gets out there does drive us crazy. And I guess, you know, we do all sides of, of retirement planning. We, we aren't just on, you know, it's got to be invested in the stock market. You know, we utilize a lot of safe strategies. You know, we use annuities. We use life insurance that's got long-term care riders attached to it because we think that people who have a threat of going into a nursing home and spending down their assets, it makes sense to hedge that bet. You know, it may, it, that may not make sense to a money manager whose job it is just to watch the stock screen, but to middle America here in Northwest Ohio, you know, the threat of losing everything to a two year stay in a nursing home, you know, is real. Well, there are lots of workers and savers and investors out there, Chris, who are wondering when they can retire and when they do, what risks will they face and how can they address them? An annuity can play a role in answering either one of those questions. First, when can I retire? If we, if we go through the process that I know you take your clients through with that game plan for retirement, you're really going to help them define what that retirement number is and, and what their outlook for being able to generate the income will look like. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some unique software pieces that, uh, you know, we can look at a number of different scenarios and people living to be 100 to somebody passing away at 75 and a in a widowed spouse in there. And then, you know, that kind of helps us find the gaps in this overall plan that they have. And to show somebody that in real time, we can adjust what if inflation stays at 5% going forward? You know, I mean, that's an eye opener right there. What if income taxes increase? And how do we hedge against that? What is my income stability, if you will, coming from my guaranteed sources? And so we show them a lot of times, people, uh, Peter, their current plan invested in their current 401k only, okay? Or then, okay, what's an alternative look like? Which of these two works out better over the course of a 30 year time frame? You know, in life is what happens to plan. So it's hard to predict when things are gonna go good. What if you start off with bad uh, returns in the stock market? Wouldn't you like to see what that really looks like from a cash flow standpoint 25 years from now if your first three years in retirement are a financial uh, recession versus, you know, what we've been going through here is this, you know, federal reserve or federal charged, you know, supercharged, throw money at everything. That's not always going to be the reality that people have where they're going to give you stimulus by the thousands that at some point we all know that's going to dry up and we'll get back into normal economic cycles where we have good times and not so good times. Well, Chris, any professional money manager or, or any, any uh, 
broker advisor uh, is going to tell you that you cannot accurately time the market 100% of the time. But if we leave our investments uh, to determine our outcome, if that portfolio invested in the market is what we are relying on, we are essentially just relying on luck in timing in our very retirement. But it's not until things uh, are, are under stress that we know if the plan worked or not. That is really in contrast and, and in opposition to the mindset of shooting for higher returns as the benchmark and litmus test for investment success. Yes, that's absolutely right. And, you know, it, it is important when you're planning out your entire retirement to look at all, all the different aspects that are out there for you and in working with someone that has an open mind that is willing to, to look at, you know, just because you read an article that this isn't any good doesn't mean it's not good. Okay. It might not be good in certain specific examples. You know, I've got clients that have more than enough money, they're not worried about running out of money or running out of income. So, you know, we typically don't do an annuity for income. We may use it for a safe money strategy or a tax deferred strategy for them, or, uh, you know, to, to help uh, mitigate bond risk, if you will. Okay. You're right. Because if I can, if I can make a fair rate of return okay, and have it safe, where zero is my worst case scenario, okay what is my bond portfolio going to look like if they raise interest rates next year, right? If I have bonds with more than 10 years of duration, the stereotype is when interest rates go up 1%, bonds that have 10 years until they mature or longer, they fall by 10% in value because why would someone pay you more money, pay you the face amount for a bond, um, you know, that's paying a lower rate when they can buy a higher rate today for the same same dollar amount. Forgive me there. I'm trying to nope. put that in layman's terms. That can be a challenge. It, the, the interest rate direction and the value of the bonds are inverse. They, they work opposite. And we have been in this low, low interest rate environment. So not only are the current bonds we hold uh, generating a low yield and underperforming, but if interest rates do climb, it could actually jeopardize the principal value of those bonds. And that's, again, where the Robert Ibertson um, article talks about how annuities can counteract that or could strengthen the, the total portfolio. Once again, we are talking with Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. If you would like to take a look at your plan, get that plan put together, pick up the phone, give a call, 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Chris, you've mentioned, I think, the three biggest things that seem to be on the mind and, and are being discussed uh, in on Main Street and around the water cooler when it comes to our money, the taxes, the tax situation and the outlook for the future, inflation, and the potential cost of long-term care is something that I think is a concern on the back of the mind of, of really all savers and investors. That's why comprehensive planning and keeping an open mind to including life insurance and or annuities, even at retirement or through retirement needs to be something that we do that can that can really help us to address those issues. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of uh, using life insurance as a part of our retirement plan for my wife and I. And that means I'm adding extra dollars into our life insurance policies to get extra cash value in there. And I can take money out of them income tax free. Chris, can I ask you, does having that in place for you and your wife give the two of you more confidence living together and spending money while both of you are, are, are here and healthy and have the ability to do so, knowing that you've got those buckets there that can replenish the dollar supply if one of you passes away? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm self-employed. I have disability insurance as well, and I have more than $2 million of life insurance on myself. Some term, some whole life. All of my whole life policies have long-term care benefits to them because, as you know, Peter, we've talked on the show here enough, we care for a couple of folks right now that have utilized long-term care facilities 
you know, or in-home care for hundreds of thousands of dollars on an annual basis. So I have hedged that bet already. My wife has hedged that bet already. So you, you bet it's nice to know that, hey, if something bad happens, we've already compensated for that. You know, that's we built that into part of our plan. And, you know, some folks that are out there listening today, to be fair, and both sides, you know, uh, uh, objective here is, you know, there are folks that have, you know, a significant amount of resources to get them through their retirement. Their kids are gone, they're completely debt free. And you can certainly make an argument that they don't need any life insurance for a death benefit, okay? But they may utilize a life insurance strategy that's got a long-term care element to it so that they can pull from that policy and pay for potential long-term care needs. The benefit to that is, you know, hey, if all goes well and they die peacefully in their sleep at home, okay, then there's still a pile of money that's going to be paid out income tax free to a beneficiary or a charity, if you will. So, I mean, that's still a win win situation. So, even wealthy people do utilize a lot of these strategies when they realize I can take pennies and I can buy dollars. Yeah. And I would say two, two thoughts on that is one, being able to say, I have enough money to be self-insured is a very confident stance financially. That's a very uh, confident place to be. But for a few pennies on the dollar, you can protect the assets that are giving you that level of confidence against the potential catastrophic costs of things like long-term care. And then part two of that, Chris, is if somebody is in that situation, and, and many who are have realized this, but if somebody is even nearing that situation, um, the, the assets that they have that confidence derived from, what is giving them that confidence, are probably at some point in time in the range of being subject to estate tax laws. And, and maybe those limits right now are very high, but they certainly have talked an awful lot about dropping that estate tax limit down significantly. So if we've got the assets that gives us the confidence to say, yes, I'm self-insured, we probably don't want Uncle Sam to be our largest beneficiary when we pass those assets on to next generation, which again is a reason why to consider some of the strategies that we've talked about today. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, I mean, yeah, it is a very tax friendly environment right now. Okay. But if you look at all the uh, government spending that has happened with this coronavirus and the size of our deficit, and if you listen to the politicians on certain sides of the aisle there, they say we need to, you know, have, uh, you know, revisit the estate tax. So, you know, there are many people out there in power that make decisions on our behalves that think that. When you die, we need to tax your estate and you need to pay that to the government because they're better at spending it than you are. Yeah, well, again, we don't uh, have that viewpoint often for ourselves and, and our own dollars. Most listeners to the program, Chris, I think would agree that we are capable and, and better equipped to make decisions on what happens with our money. And we need to be proactive in order to do that, not only during the course of our lifetime and establish a, a, a strong foundation for our own situation and our quality of life, but also to be as efficient with our dollars as possible in, in this lifetime and throughout generations. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why Chris McIntyre is here uh, taking that proactive look at planning, pick up the phone, give a call. If you would like that game plan for retirement put together, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. At the beginning of the program, Chris, we talked about how all forms of insurance essentially provide us with some level of financial protection. On the day before we retire and really in the years leading up to retirement, the assets that we have accumulated represent a large part of our sense of financial security. But those assets, because they are so important in what they represent for financial security, they also need protection as well. And that is why on today's program, as we are talking through our game plan for retirement, a discussion of and consideration of life insurance and annuities does and will remain appropriate on the day that we retire and throughout retirement. It certainly will, Peter. You know, in, in our mindset has not changed on this in over 20 years. We understand the key fundamental 
foundational strategies that have helped, you know, hundreds of our clients have some peace of mind in knowing that in a worst case scenario, we have already planned for that. Um, you know, would I like to see more people take an open mind to, you know, leveraging long-term care? You know, that's probably the avenue that most uh, retirees hope never happens to them. You know, and, you know, that would be an area we would love to see more activity involved in that, you know, it is not up to Medicare to pay for your nursing home bill. It is up to you. They pay a very limited amount of time in there. So, you know, there are a number of different wonderful financial pieces and products that are out there to help you solve some of these issues that aren't going to make you insurance poor. Well, again, Chris McIntyre is here, ladies and gentlemen, to help you craft and create your game plan for retirement. If you have a plan to double check it and make sure it is complete, addressing high level issues like income, investments, taxes, healthcare, legacy, and then obviously many subcategories and issues addressed under each one of those topics. But that game plan for retirement, a, a tangible document that you can take with you, it is something that Chris McIntyre will help you put together. No cost, no obligation, just call from the radio program and he will help you discuss with you your questions, your situation, give you a snapshot of where you are and recommendations for how to achieve your goals moving forward. 800-868-1194. That is 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Chris, we always appreciate your time. Thank you for being here on hey, your game plan for retirement. Hey, buddy, my pleasure. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. Visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for asset under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Indexed or fixed annuities are not designed for short-term investments and may be subject to caps, restrictions, fees, and surrender charges as described in the annuity contract.